Why am I always my own enemy? Stronger is something I wanna be. Hope keeps on breaking on the kitchen floor. I want more than this. Is your garden looking a little messy right now? <laughs> I know mine is. So in today's video, I'm going to tackle the garden behind me and I'm going to show how I cleaned it up with just removing some unwanted plants and grouping some plants and drips. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what I'm going to do here so and why I'm going to do it. So um, the first thing I talked about was, well, first of all, <laughs> I got weeds in here that I need to get up and I'm going to do that, uh, no problem. And then I did, I do have these great yellow primroses, but I put them like along the edge thinking that they were going to, you know, kind of spread out a little bit or whatever. And they really didn't. So now it just kind of looks like a little hokey because it's just like these individual plants. So you can't really appreciate them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to group them together. So I'm going to make more of a drift of primroses and then try to start focusing on that more in this area. This viburnum is going to be moved in the fall. So I got to, when I'm doing this, I got to kind of in my mind's eye imagine that this tree isn't going to be here. But what I want to do is I want to clean up the Corydalus lutea in the back and I'm going to, I'm going to do that. So that's going to be one of the first things that I do. Then I'm going to dig up these primroses, just kind of put them over to the side. Um, and I'm going to look at where I really want to place these new um, hostas. These are um, new hostas that I got. And then I want to look at, I've got some painted ferns that I moved into the back of the Mary Garden simply because they were in an area that had too much sun. But I like the way that these, the foliage looks with the hostas. And so I want to at least get another grouping of those that I can have over on this area, more of a drift of the ferns in this area. So really what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do with this video segment is I'm trying to, especially for, you know, beginning gardeners, I'm trying to have a video so it's kind of like you and I are gardening together. I'm just going to climb back here. And I'm going to take this, you know, this daffodil foliage for me is now to the point where I'm going to remove it. So that's just going to be pulled up and put into my, I always find just using a pail like this is super easy. And um, that's how I do all my weeding in the garden. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my trusty tool here. This is definitely my favorite um, gardening tool. Super, super useful. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull up all this stuff that, that I don't need in here anymore. Why am I always my own enemy? Stronger is something I want to be. Hope keeps on breaking on the kitchen floor. I want more than this. I'm not good at being nice to me. Always something else I want to be. Every time it's different than before, I get to all right, so as I'm cleaning this, clearing this out, so these are the primroses that I was talking about. So those just are, they're t separated too much. I want to really make them more of a clump. And so I'm thinking, you know, like maybe like a little clump area over here and then maybe a little clump area over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig each one of these up so that I can move them. And then the first thing I'll do is put some of these primroses back also going to divide them up since I got them out of the ground. And again, I'm just trying to, I thought that was a, <laughs> I thought that was a toad. I got a lot of toads in the garden, which is great. They are the best at eating the little bugs that you don't want around, but they always startle me. And I'm amazed at how many little columbine seedlings I have here. So that's nice. Although some of them like this one here on the edge, I'd rather have that one over inside of the garden. In the springtime, the hosta flowers won't be there, and it'll be nice to have those columbine. All right, so um, I think it looks a lot neater, in my opinion, without the yellow fringe leaf bleeding heart. So now the thing that I'm going to do, and again, I'm in my mind's eye, I'm trying to remember that this tree is going to be not here. Um, it does. <laughs> it does take a little imagination to figure out how you want to do the plantings without the tree being there. But um, like I said, this just, I don't think this is, 
I don't know. You know, I keep vacillating back and forth with this because I'm noticing that this tree has got a whole bunch of new growth on it. And I'm wondering if I should just leave it alone. You know what? How many times? How many times have I moved this poor viburnum? Anyway, if you have a strong opinion about it, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. In the meantime, I'm going to go get some more painted ferns, which you can see over there. And I'm thinking that they'll look great in kind of like a little sweeping drift right here in front of the Sun King plant. I had to move these. Um, I had them in the Mary Garden. And then because we lost the pine tree, they were getting way too much sun and they just got all kinds of brown leaves. You know what? I moved them to a, a, a more of a wet area, cooler, shadier, and they've already perked right up. So, all right. So I definitely um, think that these will do well here. This area is shady and it also has a bit more moisture in this area. So exactly what these painted ferns want. All right, and again, I'm just like kind of curving, curving them like a little curving drift here. All right, so the last thing, the last thing that I want to do is I want to figure out where I want to plant the hostas. Now, I know for sure uh, one of the things I want to do is I want to figure out how big these hostas are going to get. So these get about, it says, 18 feet, 18, 18 feet, <laughs> that's a huge hosta, 18 inches tall. So really not much taller than what they are in the pot and 32 inches wide. I'm not sure about that. Three feet wide? Well, maybe. I mean, that's pretty, pretty big. That might actually be too big for um, this, <laughs> this area. But I think that I want to definitely have them in the back. And again, if the viburnum moves, you can, you will still be able to see this bright foliage, which will be really nice. And you know what, I'm going to have to apologize for the noise, but it's the weekend in the suburbs and uh, the weekend is when everybody gets out their power tools <laughs> because everybody's trying to finish all their yard work before the, before the weekend is over. So I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I'll be anxious to see how it looks in the spring and how it does for the rest of the fall. And I'll keep you posted when I do my garden tours. And you know what? I'd love to know if you find this kind of content helpful. So hit me up in the comments below and let me know if just kind of working together and doing these little garden projects is something that you're interested in. And if it is, I'll try to do more of those videos. So I just want to say thank you so much for being here and watching this channel. It means so much to me and I appreciate your time and I appreciate you being here. And that's it for this video and we'll see you in the next one. Ooh,